Welcome back. We're writing Little Man Computer in C++ uh, to aid my learning. And we've just started the Little Man half of the of the program, having mostly completed the computer. And uh, we did a little bit of uh, tidying up of the tests uh, over the last couple of episodes. And uh, I just want to do one more thing. Uh, I also spotted a spelling in error in here somewhere, if I can find it again, but I probably can't. We will see. There we go. There we go. Uh, I just wanted to change this slightly to separate out, again, the two sets of tests so we can have uh, computer tests here and then start a fresh batch of tests for the uh, for the man tests here. Uh, I can type properly. Uh, so that will be a vector of test. Uh, man tests something like that and then here we'll just need to do a little bit more work and we're going to introduce a touch of duplication here which we'll eventually sort out Let's just check that works. No, <laughs> not quite. Thinking about it, that uh, runs all the tests. And let's put back our, uh, our headings uh, here. like that, wasn't it? And some little separator. And then an extra line break there. And then the same, same down here. Separator and some white space. Oops, as you can see, quite a bit of duplication starting to creep in now, and it's not particularly object oriented either with uh, a lot of a lot of the, just these standard functions and uh, well not even standard functions now just global variables uh, essentially um, so uh, at some point we probably want to to rectify that but uh, let's make a little bit more progress first um, before we do that and I will commit that so we've got a, a good breakpoint. So that's going to be a git count. Uh, separate out tests for computer and for a little man. Good. So now we can continue working on. Uh, our little man tests and we don't have to remember each time oops, we don't have to remember each time to type out the name of the test twice 
or to add in the name uh, printing. It'll uh, just work uh, by looping through the list. Good. So, little man. Uh, so we've started with the output uh, instruction uh, resulting in the accumulator value in the outbox. Uh, perhaps uh, continuing with the uh, the input function might be a sensible uh, way of progressing here. And we'll start to, to tease out a little bit of parsing of the instructions uh, by the little man. So interpreting input instruction results in inbox value in uh, accumulator should be relatively straightforward so we want to assert uh, equal uh, some value in the inbox uh, no in the accumulator what happens here yep so we're missing a computer uh, apparently the better way of dealing with that is to do this uh, and avoiding a, a copy and uh, destruct uh, that apparently happens when you when you do an assignment of a a, lo a local instance. So we will see if this works. Compiling has slowed down dramatically. I wonder if that's a an artifact of um, of using all the lambdas. Never mind, I think uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll live with a slightly longer compile time uh, for the convenience uh, of the code. So we uh, want to populate the inbox with value 13. And we want to write a little program into memory, like so. I think it's 901 for the input command. Indeed it is. And for future proofing, we shall also terminate the program like that. We then need to say man.run. We do not have a man, so we will see what the uh, what the error says. Yep, we do not have a man. And we can create a man, I think, in a similar way as we did with the computer. So I think you can say little man, man. Now there's a subtle difference between the choice of parentheses here. And I do not know what it is. Let us go with uh, with this and see how it pans out, and later do some some more reading on object uh, instantiation. So that's uh, that's interesting. So it's now read nine o two into the accumulator, which is correct because that's all that run does. So we can move on to the production code and find out what our run does. So run just runs the output uh, at the moment, but we need to uh, handle the input uh, differently. So we can do something like if, what's the simplest way of doing this? If memory location zero equals 901, then we call input else we call output. I think that, oh, hello, have we used, uh, no, that's not the right, uh, I think it's, no, that's not right either, is it? What, what is our what is our memory? I 
it is called memory. So what has happened here? Now is this down to the different way that I've instantiated the uh, computer and the little man? Let us just check I haven't written anything silly, so that's that's what I would expect to write. In fact, I can go up and see what I've done elsewhere. Yes, memory address, memory zero. That's 901, do something. And so if I do that, what is the actual error message? So use of undeclared identifier memory. Did you mean mem copy? Hmm. Let us just check if we use the old way of doing this, auto equals computer and auto man equals like so. Nope, that has uh, no bearing on anything, which is a good thing. Ah, of course, it's computer.memory, isn't it? As I'm sure you were all shouting at your screens for the last five minutes. But uh, that looks good, and we've passed, and what I will do even though it is uh, currently inconsistent, is I will return to the new way of doing this, uh, just to check that works, as it would appear to be a, a better way of doing things. and see if this works. And if that's the case, that still passes. Excellent. So I will commit that change and then I might change all of our, uh, all of our preceding instantiations of computer to the, to that, to that mechanism. So, uh, Yep. So commit, commit, and let's see what our previous thing said. A little man interpretation of our points. Okay. Yep. So get commit, add little man interpretation of oh, no idea how many T's that needs of input instruction. Excellent. And then what I can do here. Is I can change auto computer equals computer to be computer computer, I believe. And hopefully that will still pass everything. Yes, it does. Excellent. And then I have the one extra change here to make this consistent. That's looking promising. All the tests pass again. Yep, that's all fine. So we'll commit that change as well. Uh, change to instantiate computer and little man uh, better. <laughs> Not sure that's the uh, technical term, uh, but it will do for now. Good. So we've moved uh, a test on, and we now need. to 
deal. So we're dealing with input and output. And we could, there are two directions we could go here. We can either continue to deal with one instruction and interpreting that one instruction, or we can start to deal with a sequence of multiple instructions and looping through memory uh, for that purpose. I feel like continuing down this road of just handling uh, one instruction seems to be uh, the sensible uh, first pass and then to to build a loop around that as the second stage. Uh, either way I think works still but uh, this seems to be keeping all of the uh, the, the work directed in, in uh, one one section at a time. So let's uh, I think we can fit fit one more test in here before we have to go and let's put in a test for what's the next simplest um, what's the next simplest I have a suspicion that we're going to end up doing this in relatively similar order to to that which we did in the other thing. So let's let's go with store next. So little man interpreting uh, store instruction results in memory uh, in cumulator copied into specified memory address. So assert r equal some value computer dot memory uh, twenty five just some arbitrary numbers here does not matter specifically what they are as uh, so we're probably going to hard code them initially anyway and triangulate into uh, the uh, evaluation of the particular memory address. So we're going to require a couple of tests here to get to that stage. So we need a computer like so. And that fails uh, sensibly. We then need a man to run. And we'll probably need a man. We do. And then that should uh, run again with uh, some random number in. Uh, as we have not done anything with memory at all. We then need to initialize the computer to the state we want. So computer.accumulator uh, equals 99 should be the only requirement there. And then we need the program computer memory 0 equals our store instruction is 3xx. And we want um, 325 will be the correct address and again we'll terminate uh, the program for future proofing like so that will then fail sensibly and we can move to the production code so the easiest pass of that is if we are, oh, hello. This is where it starts to get interesting, isn't it? So the easiest pass of that is somewhat different. If computer memory at zero equals 902, do that and then put it in the else. And then we can say computer 
uh, store 25, I believe. Uh, memory is not a real word. That is indeed true. And where have we, where have we typed the word memory? Uh, we have typed it here. Would be so if I actually read the error message or just saw where we landed on the quick fix list. Hurrah, we've passed, uh, as we expected to now. We'll triangulate a little more. I'll try and triangulate this a, bit, a little bit by adding uh, a test for a different memory location. So little man can be uh, interpreting store instruction, so can put in two uh, memory address uh, 36 and let's rename the previous to, to memory address 25. So it should be straightforward enough uh, to write 36 in here. So Instruction 336, and that becomes 36. And we should find that the test fails because it will have uh, nothing in that particular memory address because it's written into 25. And we can then in here uh, create uh, Address is uh, computer dot memory zero modulo one hundred. I think that's the easiest way to do that, is it? It is. Uh, it passes, and I think a little. Uh, a little bit of refactoring here is warranted. Got a lot of duplication in uh, extracting the instruction. So I think what we can do is we can say instruction is computer.memory. I seem to type that a lot today. Memory there, and then uh, instruction. Instruction instruction. Excellent. And uh, let's check we haven't broken anything. That all looks very good. Yep, so we've added the store instruction. Uh, add little man interpretation of store instruction. And I think that will do us for now.